Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. We are Fiery Faith Ministries. We are so excited to be back, be with you. We have missed you. We've been out of town for a few days, so we have been using our replays, and we're glad to be back live and back on our schedule. Just blessed to have this Sabbath that we are approaching and ready to receive his rest and his restoration for this week. As always, it's such a blessing to have that set apart day, to be called set apart so that we can honor it how we're called to. Hallelujah. I'm ready. I'm ready. We are definitely tired. (laughs) Yeah, we had a long drive back, so we're still recovering from that. But we are looking forward to this weekend and the fellowship as always, with you guys and with other groups throughout the coming days. Just looking forward to being in the Word and gaining more insight and understanding into our path, that narrow path walk that we are so desiring to be obedient to and continue to walk that out to the end of our days, pleasing to the Most High. Amen. Let's say hi to everyone. Yes, welcome everyone. Shabbat shalom, shalom and Shabbat Judy. Shalom, Judy. Glad you are here, as well as Wirewool. Shabbat Shalom, We've Remnant got our family. Remnant family mm-hmm. gathering. Great to have you all. Andrea, Andrea. Shabbat Shalom. And the Colettis, Colettis, glad to see you too. Shabbat Shalom and blessings to you both. Andrea is in Texas, but her Shabbat is approaching. I think it's just about sunset now. Yeah. We are gaining daylight, which is great. Not quite to our full summer extent, but we're looking forward to each and every extra minute of sunlight we get per day. Mm-hmm. Shabbat and shalom, welcome, Monique. Monique. So happy Glad you to are see here. You. Amen. And KW, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Glad in to New have Zealand. You here. Y'all rain. So happy to see you. We are definitely glad to be back. Yes, we are. Proclaim y'all with truth. Shalom. Yeah, welcome. Glad you you. are here with us tonight. Thankful you are here as well. And And Laura Laura Lee, Lee, Shabbat shabbat Shalom, sister. In a little while, Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. shalom. And Brother Dave, glad you are here. So glad to see you, Dave. Shabbat Shalom. And Tresha, the boy's mom. 
Shabbat Shalom. I am excited with joy Hallelujah. as well. Hallelujah. It's Shabbat. Woohoo. Yes. And Yanellis, glad you are here. Yeah, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, to Shalom you. Yanellis. So happy to see you. And Laura Lee's got it there. Woohoo. It is his holy weekly Shabbat. Amen. I agree. It is such a, a joy, such an, a privilege to be able to set this day aside each and every week that it, we guard it with our heart, that we prepare leading up to it just as our feast days throughout the year as we prepare for those. This is a weekly preparation that we get to honor each and every week, every seventh day, and it's a joy working our way up to it, but the real joy comes when we get there and we can rest in him and be restored for the week ahead. He provides in all ways, and we just want to rely on him, trust in him, and let his will be done. No matter what that looks like, let's not question it. Let's just trust in it that his plan is perfect, and right. he has a way for us, a way out of anything that we're struggling with currently. He's got a way out, so look to him set it down at his feet and let him carry that burden for you. If there is something that is giving you a hard time in life, there's always an outcome and he has. And a there's way. usually a lesson in it. Exactly. Always a lesson. So when you can look at it in that perspective, sometimes it's not as troublesome as we may think. Shabbat Shalom, Jamie. Yes, Shabbat Shalom. And she says to lift her son in prayer. He has a migraine. Why don't we go ahead we and sure say will. our prayer? And, yes, let's and go ahead and do him. that. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening so blessed to call on your name, knowing that you provide in each and every way in our lives. You know the needs of all of us right now, personal, private, whatever the needs may be. We just ask that you provide how you see fit in our lives. We ask that you be with Jamie's son, that you ease his headache, his migraine, that he can enjoy this day, that he can be at peace and find the shalom and the comfort that you provide like no one else. We're just so blessed to have this fellowship, this gathering, that we can provide a message, an encouragement. We just look to you and your way Reveal your truth. Speak through us. Provide the shalom that only you can. We just want to be a light in your world to the darkness out there. Please reveal those things that are not pleasing to you, that we can remove them as we prepare for your Pesach. Remove the leaven in our lives so that we can be pure and set apart, Kodesh, peculiar people in your image. Just please be with this Sabbath gathering this evening in your holy name, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, Regina. I'm so glad to see you. We have missed you. Great to have you here. We love you greatly. The name above all names, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen indeed. And Shabbat Sherry. Shabbat Shalom, Sherry. Great to have you all here. Glad to see you. All right, so let's get our show far out of the yeah, way. Yeah, that's right. Let's and blow we'll out the song. stress of the week and, and blow this and blow that migraine right away from Jamie's son. That's let's right. Let's just focus on that, that this is a mighty shofar blast that is just going to melt that migraine away. The voice of Yahweh, the energy of the Most High. <laughs> It's hard to get it started, but once you get it, it's fun. All right. And I agree with Tricia. Yes. Peppermint is what saves me from many, many migraines. Forehead, back and neck, ice on your neck, and it usually will go away in the dark. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, we've got a song to share, and what greater title than The Great High Priest? We are going to be discussing right. that as we 
went into the tabernacle more so last week. Now we're going to address the priest, the high priest. The Kohanim. The Kohanim. And so we're looking forward to breaking that down a little bit. Of course, we know who our great high priest is. That's right. And so Yehusha we're so Hamashiach. blessed for the offering that he gave, the sacrifice for all to be redeemed in him. This is from an artist called Cameron Keith. And like I said, the title is Great High Priest. Hallelujah. Great high priest. Hallelujah. Absolutely beautiful. Such Amen. a perfect song for this Torah portion. Just unbelievably amazing. It is very fitting and we're just so blessed that we can call upon him day or night. He is always there listening, waiting for us to reach out, to call upon his name. He is ready and waiting that's right. He calls us by our name. So we call out to his name. And it is the most beautiful name, Yahusha Hamashiach. It is. It is the name above all names. Amen. Welcome, Lord G. Shabbat, Welcome. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Glad Shalom. you are here. And I agree with Sherry. Baruch Atah Yahweh Yahusha. Bless Amen. you, Yahweh and Yahusha. Hallelujah. He is our great high priest. All right. There Praise we go. Thank God that he loved us that much. You know, I think about that quite often. I just can't believe sometimes it's overwhelming thinking about the the amount of love that he has for us. I think it's a love that we we really won't completely be able to comprehend until we are in his presence. It can't be fathomed. Shabbat Shalom, Rochelle. Welcome. From Minnesota. Yes. Welcome. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Shalom, Minnesota. Thank you for joining. All right. So we are on to the next portion. Tetzave, you That's shall command. So it is. We are almost through Exodus. I know. I can't believe it. It just is zooming by. And we're exactly a month away from Pesach. That's a true. month away from our gathering. A month from tonight, we will be gathering together to start our Shabbat together and leading into Pesach. And I'm just, I am so thrilled 
Um, we are definitely going to try to record it. I don't know if we'll be able to do that live. Yeah, we don't know how the internet will be. But um, we are going to record. So we'll be uploading, uploading as we can. But that's right. we will definitely try for a live, uh, even if it's just with our phones or something, so we can get everybody uh, on camera saying hello and to to welcoming them. in mm -hmm. the, the feast day. We're so that's looking right. forward to that. So we are having a get together March 22nd through the 25th in Tennessee, Edgar Evans, Tennessee State Park. If you're interested, you can check that out on our website, on our app. You can register, reach out to us if you have any questions. We would love to have you there. We are still We're growing. having people register. That's right. So we're going to have quite have a, a gathering. A good group. And this is our first in person ever. It's incredible to think that just about all of you we have not met before in person. And so uh, we are beyond excited to be able to finally oh, see each other face to face and hug and praise the name and and just enjoy Worship each together. other in mm -hmm. fellowship. Read so. some scripture together, pray together in person. Just, I, I am so excited. So excited. We are. All right. So this is Exodus 27, 20 through chapter 30, verse 10. Last week's Torah portion, Teruma explained how Yahweh asked for a donation from the people to help create the portable tent-like sanctuary called the tabernacle, or the mishkan. Yahuwah then showed Moshe the pattern according to which the tabernacle furnishings would be made. First, the Ark of the Covenant and its cover would occupy the inner chamber called the Holy of Holies. Within an adjourning, adjourning chamber called the Holy Place, a table would hold 12 loaves, representing the 12 disciples bringing the bread of life, 12 loaves of matzah, which is representative of Yahusha, without any sin, striped and pierced for the sins of the world, and a seven-branch menorah, which is representative of the sevenfold doctrine, the seven feasts of Yahuwah, even the seven days of creation. So many wonderful things surrounding that number seven, mm -hmm. which it would illuminate the tent. And boy, would it illuminate the tent. Just think about all of those things. They're illuminating as it is. It's just amazing to see the design that Yahweh put in place. And everything, everything means something. It does. It's not just a thing. It's not just an inanimate object. It is a... It's, a, it's an expression of these wonderful things. That's the importance word. of really digging into the word because what becomes, what may be looked as a physical item, there's so much more deeper connection to it. Uh, foreshadowing, mm -hmm. we see uh, it's just incredible what we can find when we really read the word and have the Ruach reveal and, and teach us in our ways, in his ways. Hallelujah. So Yahuwah gave precise dimensions of the tent with added instruction to separate the Holy of Holies with a veil called, called the Parashet. The entire tent was to have a wooden frame covered by colored fabric and hides of rams and goats. Outside the tent, an outer court was defined that would include a sacrificial altar and water basin. The outer court was to be enclosed by a fence with fine linen on silver poles with hooks of silver and sockets of brass. I bet it was beautiful. All the silver and brass and gold. It really was awesome last week reading all the details about every little piece. Some metal, some wood, some fabric. It's incredible that that is representative of the body of Yahusha. We all have mm -hmm. unique gifts and talents. We're made different, but we all are, when we come together, we create that body. And that's exactly what each and every piece of this tabernacle did. They were all necessary, regardless of if they were visible or not. That's right. They served a purpose. And just like all of us, we have a purpose we need to make sure that we're fulfilling it so that 
we are making sure the tabernacle stands strong. And of course, being a nurse, I look at this and I see the correlation between this tabernacle and our physical tabernacle as well. There are so True. many things that are equally as important, although they may seem like, well, this is just a, a this or a that, but they, the Father made us with this grand design for everything within us to work perfectly, and it does. I mean, it's just amazing, amazing the design he had for us as humans that everything it's a miracle everything that happens within us to keep us alive yeah everything is supposed to function together when one thing goes wrong it's kind of like a chain reaction right well there's a lot of things that can compensate but it's just a it's a miracle we are walking miracles if you ever feel like you're in, not important go look in the mirror you are a walking breathing miracle and that is amazing. Hallelujah. Oh, awesome. As soon as praise, we blow that show Praise Yah. Yahweh is our healer. Hallelujah. Amen. There is power in prayer. There is power in the show far. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Hallelujah. Father. Hallelujah. That's so wonderful. So this week's portion, Tetzave. 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 Tetzave continues with the description of the tabernacle, though the focus shifts sort of to those who serve within it, the Kohanim, the priest of Yasharel. First, Moshe was instructed to tell Yasharel to bring pure olive oil for the lamps of the menorah, which the high priest was to light every evening in the holy place. And I love that thought. I love seeing that and thinking about that in my mind, that light of the menorah that's lit and it's, it's going through the darkness. It's piercing that darkness. And I see Yahushua in that he came and he pierced that darkness to give us the light, to give us the light of the world. So we wanted to look at this word command, which is what this Torah portion is. Tetzave, command. And you'll find that in Strong's or Brown Driver Briggs, either one, they both are the same numbers, H6680, and that's Satva, and it means to com command, charge, give orders, lay charge, give charge to, and order. And what sticks out to me is order. Yahweh has order in everything. He has order for our bodies, for our health, for how our organs work together. He has order for what our positions are, what our gifts are that he gives us. There is an order in every inch of his creation. He has an order. Now, when we go against his order is when things skid out of control and chaos takes over. But if we would follow his order, there would not be any of that. So this word command is a zade, a vav, and a hey. And well, I'll let you do that. You you did the word picture here, so you you can read that. Yeah, and this is just one interpretation. If you see something different, share it in the chat. We always love looking at words and breaking them down and trying to get a deeper understanding of what they are. But we know the commandments, the, the words spoken from the most high, really it creates a desire in us to want to secure that breath to walk in his ways. We know he breathed life into us. Mm -hmm. We owe him our lives, especially the sacrifice that Yahushua made for us. Our lives are his, and we are humble servants for him. We have an obe we have a desire to be obedient, and it just continues because to increase. Because we are saved, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that there are requirements in order to find that promised land the everlasting life that we are gifted, but we must remain in his commands, remain in his word, walking his ways. And so I think it's just so important to continue to obey his commands. It will create a desire within you that's hard to explain, but it's just a want 
to please him, to honor him. And that's it, to please him. We want to please him. To hear, well done, good oh, and faithful hallelujah. servant. Yeah, I that's know why. all of us are praying for that. You know, and I think about it this way. Our obedience may not be what saves us. We're obedient because we are saved. I want to walk as closely in those footsteps of Yahushua as I possibly can. Am I going to be perfect at it? No way. But I am going to give my ever effort that I have to do that, to do it to the best of my ability. And this time leading up to Pesach, we're all removing the leaven, like you said in your prayer. Yahweh, help us, show us, reveal to us those things that need to be removed. Mm -hmm. So that is a daily dying to self. And if you see something or you know that you're not acting in the character of Yah, pluck that out. Pluck out anything that keeps you off of the narrow path. Pluck out anything that might not be pleasing to the Father. You know, we desire to be obedient, but we also desire to please the Father. Exactly. You know, it does take effort and dedication in order to walk out his ways. It's very important that we don't be lazy, that we just think that, well, I don't really have to do much yeah. because we have a lot to do, not only in ourselves, but sharing this message with others, showing them the walk, the way to live. It is something so important to just continue each and every day. It's a commitment. It's that covenant that we have agreed to walk in. That's right. And if you feel distant from the Father, if you feel like he's just out of your reach, if you're seeking and searching for him, open your scripture. Just open your scripture. Start in Genesis. Just start reading and you will find him. You will find him and you will find the son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Just read in your scripture. Read every chance that you get. I mean, that is what brought us to the narrow path was seeking him. Just finally saying, you know what? We are done doing life our way. It is not worked. We want to do life your way. And boy, the minute we opened that scripture, even though we had read it, both of us so many times, he just revealed. He, he opened our eyes. And praise y'all for that. I love what y'all Rain says here yeah, about the ark. I was going to share this. A great yes. comment. I was just thinking of the ark and how it is similar to our hearts, keeping his commandments in them, as well as the bread of life or manna. Hallelujah. That is beautiful. What a beautiful picture that is. It is. You know, we were created to serve him, to honor him. The world has created many distractions. Oh, gosh, yes. But we are down Don't to our for DNA, have Yahuwah written all over us within our DNA, even within our breath. I'll try to find that video again and share it in Telegram. If you listen to someone taking a deep breath in and out, the sound, the pronunciation sounds just like Yahuwah. And it's so incredible that our breath that we're taking constantly, that he put in our lungs is speaking his name. That's right. And every breath you take is the breath that he put to open your lungs. And you have that until he takes you home until your last breath that is breathed. It's his breath that he gave you and hallelujah mm -hmm. for that. Tresha says there's somewhere in Tennessee, a replica of the Ark of the Covenant. I haven't heard that. I'm going to have to find research. That. I know yes. we have, the Parthenon with the Greek goddess, which, you know, we mm, stay clear of, but right. I'll have to look and we see where this for that. was. That would be much better. I know the, the actual Noah's Ark replica is up a little north of us a few hours in Kentucky, uh, but that would be interesting. I would mm -hmm. like to check that out. Did we say Shabbat Shalom to proclaim Yahweh truth? We did not. Welcome. Or prepare, prepare the, the way, way USA. USA. Shabbat Shalom and proclaim Yahweh truth. Yes. Great to have Welcome. you. Welcome. He have is you. the good father who sees and watches father. over his children. He is our best. So father. thankful for that. All right. So we're going to start with our first verse, Exodus 27, verse 20. And you shall command the children of Yasharel that they bring you pure oil, olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamp 
to burn always. That is so special because we are to shine our light all the time, day and night. We know the priests were called to do the same, to make sure that light was always burning. Isaiah 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Psalms 18, 28, For you will light my candle, Yahweh Elahai will enlighten my darkness. Proverbs 6, 23, For the commandment is a lamp, and the Torah is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. John 12, uh, John, sorry, John 8, 12. Then spoke Yahushua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Hallelujah. Gives me chills reading, hearing those words and reading them. So we can already see this, the connection here with the menorah and the light and what is the light of our world. Verse 21, In the tabernacle of the assembly, without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aharon and his sons shall order it from evening to morning before Yahuwah. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on the behalf of the children of Yasharel. Mm -hmm. To me, I'm just seeing that right there knowing that the Torah is the light, it's the lamp unto our feet, that is a statute forever unto our generations. 10,000 generations, we need to have that light shining, which is the Torah in our life. Hallelujah. Matthew 27, 50 and 51. Yahushua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up his Ruach, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two, from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Wow. And that's when that veil was removed. We were separated by a veil, and we are not any longer. Amen. And we have that direct connection with the Most High, where we can call on Him day and night. We can reach out in prayer, in praise. We don't have to seek anyone to intercede for us. That is a direct relationship between us and him. That's right. And Yah Reigns has it there. Beaten olives. In order to get the oil, we must endure the pressing. And mm -hmm. it, it is just a fact. It just absolutely is a fact. And we know Yah loves when we sing and praise in our Ruach. Just letting our love be known for him. Hallelujah. That's what I love doing during prep day while I'm cleaning. And I used to play music, but now I just allow my Ruach to just, I just sing whatever comes into my heart. And it's just the best praises that there is. I, I couldn't sing it the same way twice because it's a different song every prep day. <laughs> and this is a great point. Dave shares our DNA, our number five, six, Five and ten. Which is the Yod -Hav -Hav -Hav. That is Yod Hey Vav Hey written in, in our, our cells. DNA. That's right. So amazing. That's right. You couldn't make this stuff up. It's just so incredible. And it's not a coincidence either. It's all part of his plan. And the more we seek him, the more he reveals his mysteries to us. So, of course we're going to read the parable of the 10 virgins and what better time there's no better time than now to read this i feel like it's a very important it's always an important pesach but i don't know about you but i feel such a pull within me that that there is something i don't know what it is i'm not saying what it is but i feel there's a shifting it's been going several years but i feel like this is very important to be reminded of. This is very important to be focused on. There's not a whole lot of time. And it's that way always. He will come like a thief in the night. So we need to be ready. So Matthew 25, 1 through 25, 13. 
Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Master, Master, open to us. But he answered and said, Amen, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of Adam comes. And there's so many important things to see in this. Um, You can't buy the oil at the last minute. There is no last minute anything that is going to help. We have to be in the word every day. We have to be in the scripture every day. We have to be in a relationship every single day with the Father, with Yahusha. We have to be in prayer. We have to be seeking out what is within us that that needs to be purged out. We need to make an effort every single day on this narrow path. I'm seeing a connection here with the door that was shut just like Noah's Ark. Mm, Yahuwah shut the door and nobody could go in. Nobody could go out. The time was done. There was no more hope for those that chose themselves. So we have Um, to make sure that we are ready, that we are listening, that we are entered into the Ark. If the time is there, I'm also seeing another connection with, you know, the 10 virgins and the 10 commandments. We have the five first commandments focused on Yahuwah. We have the next five focused on man. So clearly the first five were focused on Yahuwah. The last five were focused on themselves and their flesh. And they lost out. They missed their opportunity because we can't be worried about ourselves and building our kingdom here because we know our kingdom isn't of the world. The Messiah is preparing that kingdom for us for eternity. Why would we want to miss out on eternity for what really is just a blink of the eye here in on earth? We are to seek him now while we still can, because there is coming a time when there will not be time left to seek him. And I think that also has a correlation with this. Seek him now. Seek Mm -hmm. ye the kingdom of Yahweh. Seek it now. Because there's going to be a time when people are not going to be able to seek him anymore. Exactly. That door will be shut. That's exactly right, Regina. You know, Noah preached for 120 years and no one really listened. He was mocked. Probably very similar to what Messiah endured during his ministry. But only eight were called only eight were found righteous and ultimately saved welcome jeffrey glad to have you here shabbat Shabbat shalom shalom. to you and john welcome shalom good to see you brother proverbs 23 23 by the truth and do not sell it wisdom and discipline and understanding hallelujah hallelujah that's powerful thank you As the prophet Amos says, seek Yah and live. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We're in that time where we need to be saying that to every single person that we can. Exactly. Time is running out. No time to skirt around the issue. Be bold about it. So let's look at this word. 
This is shimen, and this is referring to the the oil used, used as medicinal anointing. We see it in different instances here. It can mean the fat, uh, a staple for anointing the fruitful land, valleys, metaphorically, of course. But we see it consists of the shin, the mim, and the zadi. And so just like earlier was mentioned in the comments, when that olive is pressed, crushed, that's when that oil is excreted and you obtained the oil. Ultimately saying we're going to have to go through some trials, some difficult things in order to really bring that out in us, bring that the fruit out in us. It is for our own good. Like Lee was saying, it always comes with the lesson, usually at the end, but it is rewarding. It is valuable to be able to overcome those trials and be better off for it. Having that newfound wisdom that's provided by overcoming those things, by relying on Yah to guide you and let his will in the situation be done when we trust in him. Hallelujah. So the priest garments in Exodus 28, 2 through 28, 4, and you shall make holy garments for Aharon, your brother, for glory and for beauty. And you shall speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the Ruach Hokmah, that they may make Aharon's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest office. So Yahweh gave him the, gave them the knowledge and understanding to be able to make these. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate and an ephod and a robe, an embroidered coat, a turban and a belt. And they shall make holy garments for Aharon your brother and his sons that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And we've discussed, I think last week as well, that these garments were a protection it wasn't just for looks but we believe they were some sort of protection yeah, we don't know quite what they were dealing with regarding the ark and the type of energy that was coming off of that well thing. it could kill you <laughs> clearly we see that uh, but i don't think in our day and age we have a complete understanding of what it was capable of but this was very detailed and precise, just like the tabernacle was described. So were the garments, very particular order on how they must be created. That's right. And he gave the Ruach Hukmah so that they would know how to make them because it's obviously something they didn't already know how to do. Exactly. Well, I think next week is when we'll kind of touch on how and who really designed all these things was given the knowledge the and wisdom, wisdom to create hukma, these things. The wisdom. That's a really cool portion mm -hmm. too. And I love this comment, KW. Arise, shine, for the light has come, for the glory of Yahweh has risen, for the glory of Yahweh has come, for the glory of Yahweh has risen upon you. What a great song. What a great thing to shout and sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here's a look into what the garments may have represented and looked like. Of course, we've got many different parts of it from the turban to that plate of gold around mm -hmm. the turban. I believe Yahweh's name was inscribed yes. on that yod heh vav -Heh. We're get into that. Of course, then you've got the ephod, the shoulder straps with the breastplate, the stones representing the 12 tribes. You've got the Urim and the Turim on the shoulders. You've got chains of gold. You've got the robe uh, with embroidered, um, was it scarlet, mm -hmm. purple, and blue, all yes. intertwined, very detailed and fine woven work. Then you've got the pomegranates with the golden bells as the tassels. Of course, the linen underneath the undergarments. Had to be heavy, all of that had to have quite a lot of weight to it. 
Well, we you think about some of the professions we have nowadays where there's multiple layers, whether it be a, a firefighter or other type of heavy equipment, mm, you know, there's multiple layers that you put on. Protective. They all represent something. They all have a specific task. So we could possibly kind of compare it to something like that. Very interesting. Now, I do think it is also interesting. We don't have any mention of footwear. It's because mm. there was none. Just like we know Yahweh told Moshe to remove his shoes, his sandals, wow. because he was on holy ground, Kodesh set apart place. So was these priests as they were in the tabernacle. They would not be wearing any type of shoe or sandal. Uh, it could have also had something to do with grounding. That we was fixing we to know say the that. benefit of that being barefoot outside in nature. Uh, but it is interesting that, you know, a very detailed garment from head almost to foot, but not quite. There is no covering for the feet. Uh, very intentional, I'm sure. That's amazing. So in Exodus 28, 36, and you shall make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it the engravings of a signet, signet Kodesh El Yahuwah. So that was what was on that gold plate on his, turban. on his turban at the top there. And I wanted to look at that word Kodesh, which is holy, H6944. And it's a beautiful word. Mm -hmm. It's apartness, holiness, sacredness, set apartness. We want to be Kodesh. We want to be of God, of places, of things, set apartness. And we see that here in the Odeot. You've got the Kof, the Dalit, and the Shin. And that set apart someone or something that has been separated from the rest for a special purpose. Holy, sanctuary, hallowed, holiness, dedicated and consecrated. So that Kof, Dalit, and Shin you, you work this up. The sun or sun is the door entrance leading to the, to that separation, to that set apartness. And hallelujah for that. We want to be set apart. And we are. And you feel it. I'm sure you feel it. We feel it. And at times we may feel that that's a heavy weight, almost like the garments that these uh, Kohanim wore. It may feel heavy to be separated, but it is not. It really is not. That That is just a construct of our mind thinking that, that it's a difficult thing. His yoke is easy. Being separated is a blessing. We just have to get our mind straight to that. We have to be focused solely on him. He has to be first at all times. And when he is first at all times, it's not heavy being separated. And we've got to remember his burden is light. We bring the burden upon ourselves. Just like you were talking this morning, many times we're making our road much more difficult than it has to be when we're unwilling to let go of that baggage, the trauma that we've held on to for years and years. Just be for take in that and That's allow right. the most high to cleanse you of that. It is such a blessing to be able to release it, to set it at the foot of the cross and That's allow right. him to carry it for you. You know, when you cry out in your desperation, you know, Yah, this is too heavy. If you listen, he's simply saying that it is set it down, set it down. I did not require I'm not requiring you to carry this burden with you at all. Mm -hmm. And I love this comment from Sherry talking about removing your shoes. I do that when I pray because I am before his throne in the Ruach. That is That's beautiful. something to really think about. I'm going to it's make more Brown. of an effort to do that as well. That's really wonderful. I love that. Yah's rain, Yah Rain says, Aharon and his sons had their feet washed before their ordination, just like Messiah mm -hmm. washed the disciples' feet. How beautiful and amazing is that? Because they were walking in on hallowed ground. Yeah. 
You know, we're seeing the foundation for so many things being set here with Moshe and the whole wilderness journey. We may see that it's a foreshadowing to Messiah because he lived that out as well. He didn't do away with this testament, the, the covenant, all these things that were done in the Old Testament were still done in the New Testament. And it is so special to see these connections between both because That's right. it's the Aleph Tav. Yeah, he never changes. is the Aleph Tav. He's that beginning all the way to the ending. He knows the ending to the beginning back and forwards. Mm -hmm. It's and he's at so every point at one time. Think about that. You really want to blow your mind. Think about that. He is with every single one of us and in the past and the future at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So Psalms 4, 3 through 6. But know that Yahweh has set apart him that is holy for himself. Yahweh will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still, Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in Yahuwah. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Yahuwah, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. Hallelujah. I love that. You've got the part of the priestly blessing right there. You've also got one of the most powerful statements that Messiah says is, you know, Who sin no that? more. Yeah. You know, you are cleansed. You are forgiven, but sin no more. And he always says that. He doesn't say, I've healed you. Now you can do whatever you want. And that's what's been forgotten. You know, that is the travesty that has happened in churchianity. We have to sin no more. It's almost as if he was telling them your plague, your disease, whatever you were suffering and struggling with, it was because of your sin. So now I have healed you. I have taken it away. Don't let it come back by sinning like you were. First Peter 2, 9 and 10. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Elohim, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Through Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise Yah for that. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Those words are to us now. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting comment. The shoulders is blessings and curses. The left shoulder Mount Ebal, Ebal is the curses. curses. The right shoulder, Mount Gerizim, is the blessings. Wow. She's referencing Exodus 28, 9. You shall take two onyx stones and grave the names of the children of Yasharel. And that is a very interesting topic. We haven't really dug into a whole lot. Uh, the Urim and the Turim uh, sounds a little supernatural in a way where that would, Yahweh would help the high priest make decisions through those stones. Uh, I love the fact that all 12 tribes were engraved on the stones of the breastplate, the ephod, as if they were, you know, on the heart of the high priest, wow. just like Yahushua has uh, his children on his heart, in his heart, Engraved in the palm of his hands. Exactly. I'll let you cover the Greek. Okay. I knew you were going to do that. There's no way I can say this. Okay. Peculiar is G4047. Peripoesis? Peri Peripoesis. Close enough. Acquisition, the act or the thing by extension, preservation to obtain, obtaining, peculiar. And here's the word that stuck out to me, purchased. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. a possession, saving. That's what it means to be his peculiar children. Think about that. We are purchased by the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach. We are now his possession and he saved us. I think Hallelujah. that's why that he's gave described me just talking about that <laughs> as a jealous L because he has purchased us. We are his possession. Of course, he doesn't want to lose that. So he is jealous because man has given their attention and their worship to false Elohim. And so that has created a jealousy, but is a good thing. It shows him, it shows us the, the dedication and the everlasting love that he has for us. He never wants to lose us. We, we were purchased by that, that blood sacrifice of Yahusha. I'm going to (laughs) say Acts 20, 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Ruach HaKodesh has made you overseers to feed the called out assembly of Elohim, which he has purchased with his own blood. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1, 12 through 14, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Mashiach, in whom ye also trusted. After that, ye heard the word of truth, the basura of your, Yesh- your Yeshua, your salvation in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Ruach HaKodesh of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Ah, Beautiful. Hallelujah. Powerful scripture. So Exodus 28, 37 through 43. And you, and you shall put it on a blue lace that it may be upon the turban, upon the forefront of the turban it shall be. And it shall be upon Aharon's forehead that Aharon may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Yasharel shall hollow in all their holy gifts. And it shall be always upon his forehead that they may be accepted before Yahweh. And you shall put them upon Aharon, your brother and his sons with him and shall anoint them and consecrate them to sanctify them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And you shall also make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from their, from the loins, even unto the thighs they shall reach and they shall be upon Aharon and his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the assembly or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place that they bear not iniquity and shall die. It shall be a statute forever unto him and his seed after him. Well, we see here how important it is for that. Uh, for these coverings, that they are a protection in a way, because it clearly says that they bear not iniquity and die. But to also, as a vessel, to be pure without sin, it would definitely take some preparation, you know, preparing to make sure that you are righteous and found worthy to enter in, as we are to do each and every day. I love how It's supposed to be on the forefront of the turban here. Yahweh's name as we are to have his name, his Torah on our forehead, on our frontlets and in our hand at all times. Want to read these? Yeah. So Revelation 7, 3 saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our Elohim, sealed the servants of our Elohim in their foreheads. So we see this, the how important the foreheads, the sealing of the foreheads is. Mm-hmm. And also Revelations 9, 4, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not 
the seal of Elohim in their foreheads. So we see the first one was about they don't do any of this until we have sealed the servants of Elohim. 9.4 is about those who do not have the seal of Elohim in their foreheads. In Revelations 14.1, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred forty and four thousand, having the Father's name written in their foreheads. Mm. Revelations 22.3, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Amen. That is a Isn't wonderful it? connection to this week's portion. I Absolutely. love that. Absolutely. You know, to love Elohim mm -hmm. with all our heart, with all our mind, our soul, and our strength. That's everything that we have physically, mentally, and spiritually. We are to be giving to Him to the best of our abilities above you can't anything sin. else. When you're doing that, you physically can't sin. Because you can't hold both of them at the same time. Great point. So Exodus 29, 1 through 7. And this is the thing that you shall do unto them to hollow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish, and matzah and matzah cakes tempered with oil, and matzah wafers anointed with oil. Of wheat and flour shall you make them. And Ahron and his sons you shall bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and shall wash them with water. And you shall take the garments and put upon Ahron the coat, and at the robe of the ephod, and the ephod and the breastplate, and gird him with the belt of the ephod. And you shall put the turban upon his head, and put the holy crown upon the turban. Then shall you take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. Here we're seeing that called a crown, just as those chosen will receive their golden crown one mm -hmm. day. That's I amazing. Saw that too. And Andrea says, His name has opened up the doors of understanding. Hallelujah. It really has. In our minds. So that word crown we wanted to look at in Strong's H5145 is Nezer from H5144. Properly, something that's set apart. There we see that again. Something set apart that is abstractly dedication of a priest or a Nazarite. Hence, consequently, con concretely, unshorn locks, also by implication, a uh, chaplet, especially of royalty, consecration, crown, hair, separation, which I found so amazing to see again that set apart, that crown, that set apart. And in the odiote, we see an ornamental place on the head as a sign of dedication. That also could be reminiscent of his name in our forehead, right? Also mm -hmm. of any sign of dedication, such as the shaved head of one who is dedicated and separation, which I love that. And we know hair for a woman is a separation as well. Well, you know, we love the verse out of Isaiah that our names are engraved upon his palms. What if our crown one day, if we are found worthy and given one, will have his name engraved in our forehead. Hallelujah. In James 1, 12, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which Yahweh has promised to them that love him, to them that love him. And what does it mean to love Yahweh? To love Yahweh is to keep his commands, to be obedient into, unto him, and to love one another. And to love one another is also to keep the commands it's amazing how that works. It's just all connected. It is. Exodus 29, 10 through 18. And you shall cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the assembly. And Ahron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock. And you shall kill the bullock before Yahuwah 
by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And you shall take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with your finger and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. But the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shall you burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. You shall also take one ram and Ahron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. And you shall slay the ram and you shall take his blood and sprinkle it round about upon the altar. And you shall burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is an ascending smoke offering unto Yahuwah. It is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And our prayers raises those ascending smoke offerings now. I love that. Cannot be offering strange fire. We can look at that in many different ways, but it will not be accepted. There will be a consequence if we try to raise that up. That's right. Gigi's got a wonderful comment here. It is written, let no man take your crown. We need to make sure we don't lose it. Hallelujah for that. Man, it's worth fighting for. It we is. have to stand guard, stand strong, bold and courageous. It's going to take that in order to endure that persecution that we will receive for his namesake. It's almost a promise, a guarantee from Messiah himself that yeah. that will happen. But blessed are those that stand strong in his name, honor him and love him, following him. The reward will be had one day. Very well said. So we see Yahushua HaMashiach, our perfect sin offering and ascending smoke offering. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of Elohim in him. Acts 2, Acts 2.38, Then Kepha said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahuwah Yahusha for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. Hebrews 10, 4 through 9. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he came into the world, he said, In sacrifice and offering you would have no delight, but a body have you prepared me. In ascending smoke offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the rolls of the sephir, it is written of me to do your will, O Elohim. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and ascending smoke offerings and offering for sin, you would have no delight, neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the priestly regimen. Then said he, lo, I come to do your will, O Elohim. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. That's really deep, especially looking into when Messiah came and said that it is finished. You know, many will proclaim that the whole law, the whole covenant, everything was done away with. But we're seeing that what was finished, what was finalized was those offerings, the animal sacrifices, because Messiah was that last sacrifice necessary. He took our death sentence. And the death sentence was the other thing to be fulfilled and done away with because he conquered the grave. Those were no longer needed. His offering, his sacrifice was what finished it. Hallelujah. Praise him in his glorious name. Mm -hmm. So Exodus 29, 19 and 20. And you shall take at the other ram, and Ahron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Then shall you kill the ram and take of his blood and put it on the tip of your right ear of Ahron. Put it upon the tip of the right ear of Ahron and upon the tip of the right ear of his sons and upon the thumb of their right hand and upon the great toe of their right foot. And sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. This symbolized their complete consecration. 
to hear the word of Yahuwah, to serve as mediators, and to walk as an example to others. 1 John 2, 1-6 My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahushua HaMashiach, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we guard his commandments. He that says, I know him, and guards not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso guards his word, in him truly is the love of Elohim perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that says he abides in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Hallelujah. And that, go back up for a second. The sim, the, that it symbolized to hear the word of Yahweh, to serve as mediators and to walk as an example to others. That is to us as well. Now, those are things we should be doing every single day for the world to see. Mm-hmm. Because people learn by example and we have to do exactly those things as well shabbat shalom sabbath lounge glad to see you guys glad you are here hope you're doing well Mm -hmm. and that's a great comment i will build my temple in the hearts of men praise the most high indeed hallelujah so in exodus 29 32 through 35 and Aharon and his son shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly and they shall eat those things wherewith the atonement was made to consecrate and to satisfy them but a stranger shall not eat thereof because they are holy and if aught of the flesh of the consecrations or of the bread remain until the morning then you shall burn the remainder with fire it shall not be eaten because it is holy and thus shall you do unto Aharon and to his sons according to all things which I have commanded. Seven days you shall consecrate them. Seven days. It took seven days to consecrate them. Another representation of perfection. Yah's perfect number. Picking up in verse 40 through 46. And with the one lamb, a tenth dill of flour mingled with the fore part of hen of beaten oil and the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. And at the other lamb you shall offer at evening and shall do thereto according to the oblation of the morning and according to the drink offering thereof for a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. This shall be a continual ascending smoke offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly before Yahuwah, where I will meet you to speak there unto you. And there I will meet with the children of Yasharel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the assembly and the altar. And I will sanctify also both Ahron and his sons to minister to me, in the priest's office. And I will dwell among the children of Yasharel and will be their Elohim. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah Elohim that brought them forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, that I may dwell among them. I am Yahuwah Elohim. Hallelujah. I love how it says, go back up, that he is at the door of the tabernacle and where he will meet you to speak there into you. So that he's right there. Place. Yes. He's right there waiting to speak to us. We are the tabernacle now. So he is there waiting to speak to us. Think about that. How amazing is that? All we have to do is cry out to him, talk to him, be in the word. He's right there waiting to meet and speak to you. And that offering that he's 
commanding to be perpetual for everlasting for all generations that is still ongoing we are still to be giving up our offering to him that our prayers oblation our prayers our obedience our humility our humbleness our meekness the fruits of the ruach all are found pleasing in his sight that's right so we're going to finish a verse that we shared a few slides back picking up in verse 10 of hebrews 10 by the which we i'm sorry by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahushua HaMashiach once for all. And every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of Elohim, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Ruach HaKodesh also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will cut with them after those days, says Yahuwah. I will put my Torah in their hearts and in their minds will I write it and their sins and wicked deeds will I remember no more. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Hallelujah. That covenant that we are still in, he has placed that within us. That Torah is written on our hearts. If we have circumcised our hearts of stone and be, has, have been given a heart of flesh through baptism and choosing to follow him, those words will be written on our mind and on our heart. Hallelujah. His name will be written in your forehead. That's right. Genesis 17, 7 through seventeen ten, And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you and their gener generations for an everlasting covenant to be Elohim unto you and to your seed after you. And I will give unto you and to your seed after you at the land wherein you are a stranger at all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their Elohim. And Elohim said unto El Avraham, you shall guard my covenant. Therefore, you and your seed after you in their generations. This is my covenant, which he shall guard between me and you and your seed after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. It's a perpetual covenant. If we have chosen Yahushua, if we have chosen to follow him, we have been grafted into that covenant, into the seed of Avraham. We are seeking that promised land. The promised land is eternal life. We have the directions. We have the instructions in order to find it. We just have to follow it. We have to be obedient to the commandments. We have to play the game. We have to play and, and stay in line. We can't walk away, go astray, seek after our own flesh. That's not a part of the agreement. That's not the covenant. The covenant is between Yah and us. And to be obedient to what he has commanded his children. So we're going to finish with Exodus 30, 1 through 10. The altar of incense. And you shall make an altar to burn incense upon. Of shatim wood shall you make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. And you shall overlay it with pure gold the top thereof and the sides thereof round about and the horns thereof and you shall make it unto it a crown of gold round about and two golden rings shall you make to it under the crown of it by the two corners thereof upon the two sides of it shall you make it and they shall be for places for the staves to bear it withal 
and you shall make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. And you shall put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. And Ahron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning when he dresses the lamps. He shall burn incense upon it. And when Ahron lights the lamps at evening, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before Yahuwah throughout your generations. Ye shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor ascending smoke sacrifice, nor oblation, neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. And Ahron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year, with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto Yahuwah. Hallelujah. A perpetual offering of incense, of our best, of the fruit that we are bearing. He wants our best. That's all he wants. He doesn't want strange incense, strange uh, fire of any other sacrifice. That's right. We can't be mixed in, in the ways of the world, in with the ways of Yah. We are called to be set apart. You cannot mix pagan traditions of man in with the way of Yahweh. That is strange incense. That is strange fire. Don't do that. It did not work well for Aharon's sons. Yeah, there's many lessons to be learned. We see many have lost their life because they did not follow his ways. And this is a covenant everlasting. So we need to continue to make sure that we are doing our best to follow his ways. And thankfully, it is right there in the word. If you're not sure, if you're unsure of how to do things, the word will direct you. It That's will right. guide you and lead you in his ways because these words were spoken from the Most High. They are for our good, for our benefit. They will lead us to where we are seeking. Hallelujah. Well, this has been a wonderful Torah portion. I really enjoyed this every week. Every week I love. Every week is so great, so unique, full of lessons. Uh, they're just incredible that each and every cycle, there's something new to be learned, more wisdom to be gained. And that is because the word is alive. It's living, it's living in us. And we want to continue to share that with others so that they can see the blessing. They can receive that blessing and the promise that has been given to mankind if we just follow him if we just obey him and walk in his ways hallelujah well you're gonna blow that so far shabbat shalom hg glad you are here good mm -hmm. to see everyone thank you so much for joining us this evening may you have a blessed sabbath may your days be fulfilled may you praise him shout for joy singing his name hallelujah praise be to him and the blessings that he provides with every breath that we take. It is not to be taken for granted. He is within us down to the very molecule that he created us to be. So make sure that you are using your abilities, your talents, your gifts for his purpose, for his plan. Seek him and his kingdom first. And the reward awaits you. Mm -hmm. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Have a great evening. Have a great Sabbath.